Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Audible is the destination for thrilling audio entertainment with next listen recommendations to habituate every type of thriller listener. The time is now more than ever to embrace the breathtaking, sinister, and shocking tales that have enthralled you, especially with brand new exclusive thrillers from best-selling authors who are guaranteed to keep you gripped. So, Ronnie, I recently downloaded Squeeze Me by Carl Hyacin, mainly because it shows a martini glass with a snake tail wrapped around it. I mean, what else needs to be said? And I am very excited to listen to it later today. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Do you struggle trying to reach those corner lashes when applying mascara? L'Oreal Paris' new Panorama Mascara catches every lash for corner-to-corner volume. Your sister uh, has been using this, right? She loves it, yes. They sent me some, and I gave it to my sister and my nieces. And actually, I looked at, uh, I saw my niece the other day and was like, your eyelashes, is that the new mascara? She's like, yes, look at them. (laughs) They were like fanned out. I mean, this is a great product. You can buy Panorama Mascara on Amazon today. Want to see life in Panorama with fully fanned out lashes? Now you can with L'Oreal Paris Panorama Mascara that creates corner-to-corner panoramic lash volume. Achieving a gorgeous grin from home isn't a total mystery with Bite Clear Aligners. Just don't be surprised if all of your sleuthing friends start asking, what's your secret? Begin by ordering your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me is the delectable and delicious Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hello. First of all, congratulations on having your sperm chosen to be Lala's baby daddy sperm. That's an amazing honor. Uh, that sperm's inside Lala right now recapping everything. It's like, fuck these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the uterus opens up where there's like five sperm like walking around. It's like, listen, sperm, if you've got time to lean, you got time to clean, am I right? Let me tell you, I looked around at all these other spermatozoa and this egg, and I said, you might as well be rams, baby, because none of you have chins, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked at that zygote, and I was like, at the end of the day, you get nothing for nothing, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh we're here to talk vanderpump rules uh it's been a big week of vanderpump for us for our bonus episode which you can get on patreon patreon.com slash watch what uh we did an overview of the first four episodes of vanderpump villa and then we have a recap of vanderpump villa episode five that was originally we were, we were, we were moving it around and it's going to come out this thursday and so if you've been watching that on Hulu, go listen to our recap, because that, that is a show. And then we also have The Valley coming up tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to give you uh, a heads up about all the Vanderpump things happening right now. And then, of course, come see us at Netflix as a joke in two weeks. That's going to be amazing. And also London, Dublin, and Birmingham. All the tickets are on watchwhatcrappens.com. And if you forget what our Patreon is, it's also at watchwhatcrappens.com. So that is all the news that is fit to speak. And now let's dive into this Vanderpump Rules episode. Um, It opens with Trixie channeling her inner Kesha with a song that is a complete lie when it comes to this show, which is... It's a long road to our dreams, but there's hope when we believe we can make it look in my eyes. These are the best days of our lives. Literally, when it comes to this cast, the road to the dreams is never ending because they're never going to achieve them. 
There is no hope, even despite what they believe. They cannot make it. You cannot look into their eyes. And uh, these are really the worst days of their lives. So Yeah, I think, you know, honesty in music might be even better. I would just like a song on Vanderpump Rules. It's like, I gave up my dreams a long time ago. I realized they were all a no-go. Now I'm just starting fights with other hoes to keep a job in my farmhouse. That would be accurate. And it's also very lovely. <laughs> Isn't it? Why am Spotful. I so red-faced today? Do you think it's because I'm in a purple shirt? Or do you think that I've lost so much skin from these chemical peels that I'm just going to be Louis color now? Maybe you're just, like, embarrassed about, like, how good your song was. I've watched um, so much Vanderpump Rules-themed shows this past couple of days for this show that I'm turning pink. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> If it's any consolation, I'm sort of like orange hued. So I think that like it's just maybe we just blame it on StreamYard. Who knows? I'm oddly toned today. Sorry, everybody. And by sorry, I mean not sorry at all. I am who I am. Suck it, batch. <laughs> um, that's my song for this show. Okay, so we're at the Kyle Chan showroom. Glad Kyle Chan's getting something out of this deal. Is there a friend who has ever merchandised better than Kyle fucking Chan? Bro. Every single season, Kyle Chan is on this show hawking his wares. Are discounts on diamonds really this big to you people? Like, my God, they really love their Kyle Chan just for a discount every once every decade when they get married. I just love how he's probably so excited for the brand awareness and the publicity, not realizing that every moment that he's on Vanderpump Rules, he's actively undermining any sort of brand he might have. Because you know that if someone sees like, oh, that's a cool ring. Where is it from? Kyle Chan. I was like, oh, no. I am not touching <laughs> I'm not touching that Tom Sandoval influenced ring right now. None of it. It hasn't really worked out with anybody. I mean, that that's where the, the uh, Bubba's got their ring. That's where the Sheena got her Shea ring. That's I mean, that's where they all get their rings. You know, it's like cursed. Kyle Chan is cursed. There, I said it. So Sheena's doing like a selfie and everything, and she's like, "Yeah, so like we're at Kyle Chan's store, and like we're here to shoot my mu- my my good S Gold music video with like the twenty sevens. I can't wait for you all to see it. Peace out." Sheena's vlog. <laughs> I laugh every single time. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's like Sheena's vlog. Because everyone else is like, "Look, I'm making an Instagram story," but not Sheena. It's like it's Sheena's vlog. Hi, everybody! Right now, I'm standing in front of stairs at Kyle Chan's place. <laughs> so Lala and Ariana arrive and Brock is there, a lot of hugs and everything. And she was like, Um, I just got like Katie's text and she's like not coming. I'm like, wait, why? And she's like, Well, I'm like, what happened? And she's like, Oh, I'm like on my deathbed. And I'm like, Are you like really sick? Or are you just like trying to avoid Lala after that big fight? I'm like, I think she's probably trying to avoid this like garishly gold space because Katie right now only dresses in like black sweatshirts <laughs> she's like i don't want well, to also it's avoiding you know we all see pictures of ourselves facebook's like hey remember 12 years ago and they show you a picture 12 years ago and you're horrified i mean imagine yeah. that but it's a good as gold video like really <laughs> Dude, that's embarrassing in current times could you imagine in 10 years nobody needs that in their memories sheena okay also no, no. katie is really sick and you know because she sent a picture with her text because the text was like I'm on my deathbed. And then it's also a picture of Katie going like this with her hand over her face, posing like, <sighs> like with a full face of makeup looking gorgeous. She's like, <sighs> like I'm sick. <sighs> look how, look how weak my <sighs> is in stills. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was curious about like what my Facebook, um, what my Facebook thing was from like my memories are like, what would, what would be my memory today? So I went onto Facebook and here's what I have. Uh, this was in 2017, just alerting everyone that I will be attempting to make a German pancake this morning. Hashtag home cello weekend, which is <laughs> probably something I would post nowadays. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to look. And I'm also a picture of Pumpernickel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Matt and Michael because I found, I saw, okay, here's the text to them. So the other day I got one. That's why I was thinking of the Facebook memories and how horrifying they are. I got one of us doing this gay scavenger hunt 12 years ago, 2012, April 14th, 2012. We had to dress in costumes to do this gay scavenger hunt in WeHo and we were Boy Scouts. That's us. And actually, this is a terrible, can you see it on the video? 
This is actually a terrible uh, yes. example because I actually look cuter here than I, I mean, I actually look cuter now than I did here, I think. So let me just say, uh, whatever's happening, you glow I'm up. winning, okay? I'm winning. God, I love you 12 years ago. Stay in the past, suckers, I'm better now. Um, oh, by so, the way, you're uh, not going to hear that quote from anybody after this go good as gold shoot. Okay, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's the, the last bit of self-confidence you're getting from me this year as well. The point is that Katie was what would that be called? Like future casting? I don't know. She's just she's anticipating. She's like, I've already had a lot of embarrassing Facebook moments, so we're just gonna. I have years of Tom being sent to me on Facebook right now, so no. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm like now getting absorbed in my Facebook memories. I'm like, I remember that. Um, Sheena is like, when I recorded Good as Gold, I never could have imagined that like 10 years later I would be doing a music video for it. But like after being like back in the studio with the 27s, which was like the Kyle Chance of music, I just realized how positive music has been for me. And like it just gives me this like creative outlook to, outlet to just like let my feelings out. It's kind of like when I went like this. <laughs> this is wow. such a better creative outlet than yelling at Brock and bathing suit stores. <laughs> so then we see um, Burbank and um, we know where James is because literally still makes me laugh like every i was just sitting there just chuckling i'm like they just every single time they show that plane it's like They're not us assholes. joking we're not joking we're not making it up like they literally will always show that plane they're such assholes i love that even on this show they location shame people it's so funny so james and ally james is telling hippie to sit and ally's like james you have to come listen to this it's insane apparently Rachel went on some podcast. <laughs> some podcast by an old lady. I don't know. Her son was setting in the seventh window of the eighth moon of the, of the Saturn window and windowsill and stuff. So I did her birth chart, and the birth chart climbed back into a womb. It really did not <laughs> want to be born. <laughs> Bethany Frankel, everybody. <laughs> like, what do you mean, some podcast, huh? Just be, just be with Bethany. Some podcast. What, what do you, what, what are you talking about? Just some podcast. The podcast. All right, I started podcasts. All right, I'm the grandmother of podcasting. How dare you call me old? Okay, I'm not old. I'm classic, classic podcaster. <laughs> I loved Allie's little some podcast shame, uh, only because Bethany did that. Bethany did that to us. So she's like, "What? There was some podcast called Watch What Happens. I posted a meme, and Andy Cohen left a smile on it. Like, I don't know what's the matter. What's happening? What's going on?" So I'm like, now you know what it feels like to be some podcast, Bethany Frankel. Yeah. But also, I think that Allie just genu genuinely does not know who Bethany Frankel is. <laughs> no. You know, she's like, who is this person? Yeah. <laughs> was she a newscaster? I mean, too, I think most people around Allie's age, Bethany Frankel is just some crazy ghoul on TikTok who's like <laughs> eating, eating, you know, shellfish out of a bag from a ice yeah. cooler in a hotel somewhere going... <laughs> I, th I think Bethany eat. fish in a bag. <laughs> Not crazy. You get fish. It's in a bag. You pull it out of the bag. It's got spices. Look at this. It's nuts. They give you plastic to put around your body because you get you get you get the the shellfish on it. It's literally crazy right now. I'm eating <laughs> everything I hated in France. Um, I feel like Bethany is like. I feel like Allie's perception of Bethany is like our perception of Margaret Thatcher growing up. It's just like an older woman who's somehow present in our lives but we don't really get her significance and just know that she just she exists we just know that we're terrified <laughs> we, <know laughs> we just know not to mess with her <laughs> oh could you imagine meryl streep playing bethany, bethany franco movie? actually that would you She'd know like, people are always me. i'm eating fish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she Off would make bethany wear glasses in a hotel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meryl Streep doing Bethany, she would be like, what's the matter? What's happening? What's going on? What's, go what's it going on? <laughs> and for those who are listening in audio, I took off my glasses because that's Meryl Streep's big thing. And she takes on, puts on glasses and takes them off. What's the matter? What's happening? What's it going on? <laughs> okay, so they're talking about some podcast and um, she's like, yeah, and she's even blaming hippies' behavior on you. Like, what the fuck, James? 
which Raquel does do, of course. She goes and says that James, uh, uh, like, abused the dog or something and so, or, or taught the dog to bite and be aggressive or whatever. Mm. So James is like, oh, she thinks she's got this whole platform where she's going to talk shit about me, make me seem like a bad doggy dad. It's ridiculous. It's like, oh, just wait. It gets worse. <laughs> just give it a few episodes. <laughs> I can't believe she would say I'm a bad doggy dad. Help me stop. Stop licking your nuts, you stupid fat slut of a dog. <laughs> a good doggy dad. Fat slut. <laughs> so um, Raquel, we go back to... I was standing in line today at the grocery store. It was really long. So I was reading my trusty old Vanderpod recaps, which I read on the Instagram. And yes, I am talking very slowly because I'm trying to pull it up right now. And of course, I put Candor Pod and was wondering why it wouldn't come up. <laughs> wow. Um, it's like Candor and Neb Pod. It's like a podcast about Candor. <laughs> the Spider Woman. Okay. So, Vanderpod <laughs> recaps. I was reading today in line. Love you. Thank you for your work. And it was another Raquel episode. I'm not going to get there. Okay. Ra- Rachel goes rogue. She's answering viewer comments and she's like, I've learned so I mean look it's just it's just so long it's just Rachel is still going on about how she feels I'm being honest and truthful and being authentic to who I am and choosing to share that and it's important that um I was part of the show and for all of my 20s and it's a developmental process where eventually I can't stop talking about it but I feel like it's unrealistic to expect somebody to completely disconnect oh my god it was one affair you are talking more than the entire fair lasted. I've never. Good Lord. Be quiet. <laughs> just, just take a break. I mean, I don't even care. It's not that she's saying anything offensive or anything. But as someone who doesn't even really hate Raquel, I'm just like, girl, aren't yeah, you exhausted from this? Do something else. Go outside. Yeah, I agree. Get I would say touch to the grass, but I hate that saying. I think it's so incredibly Mm-mm. demeaning. To tell somebody to go leave some, their home. Yeah. Go pick some blueberries, strawberries, boys and berries. Just do what Caroline Fleming would do. So we go back to the music video and Lala is like, so do you feel like you're banging out after that podcast that dropped today? And she was like, yeah, I've like been like literally going since like 7 a.m. So I like haven't listened to anything. Like I only have only had like people text me and like there have been like so many texts right now, but I like not been able to catch up. So like I just haven't really listened. It's like, you know, you can just say I haven't heard it yet. And like, we but know, I like, haven't heard it. Like, that's so a fucking lie because she had to drive here from Marina. So, you know, she in the hallway is like, oh, my God, can you believe Bethany Franco Raquel said this about me? What a bitch. I'm going to get blamed for this. Watch. I'm going to somehow get blamed for this. Everyone's going to blame me. And then it's going to be me. I'm <laughs> Sheena was the first Ronnie, person to listen to that shit. Give me a break. No, if you think that Sheena has not was not listening to the Good as Gold emo remix all the way from Marina Del Rey to the too. farthest reaches of Chatsworth or wherever they are, <laughs> like you know, she's like, guys, we're good as gold. That's, That's true. her emo. Good point. She was over and over again. You know, she was. That's funny. Okay, so she is saying that uh, there have been all these texts, and she's like, but from what I hear, she was saying that she and Ariana were acquaintances at best. And then um, we see a clip of uh, Ariana saying, yeah, we spent a lot of time together. And then we see a flashback of Tom being like, Ariana, I got you again for your birthday, Raquel. As if this is somehow, I don't know that this is the best proof. I mean, that's just proof that Tom was bringing Raquel around his girlfriend constantly, even though he was banging her. Listen, they were not acquaintances, okay? They were friends. They were, at the very least, they were friends. And, like, this is some Kyle Richards rewriting history about friendships at bullshit. Like, they were friends. Well, Ariana's changes like, her story all the time. All the time. And Ariana's like, um, when she says we weren't that good of friends, it's either her telling herself that so she feels better about what she did, or she's saying, I didn't, I didn't think shit of Ariana the entire time. So... Ariana's basically like, either way, it's uh, it's bullshit, no matter how you interpret it. Yeah, so Raquel's like, whole thing is like, I'm going to take accountability. That's what it's about, growing and taking accountability. We weren't friends. Okay, but you were friends. But we were friends. Maybe I said that yesterday, but I'm a different person than I was yesterday, and I take accountability for that. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's like she just lies and then she'll change her story again and be like but i was accountable so it doesn't count now that was yesterday like that's not how it works (laughs) ding dong get out of here 
Jesus. Yeah, so Sheena's like, yeah, she said, Raquel said that, like, I had some sort of, like, savior complex, and our friendship was, like, equally beneficial, and as far as, as how much I helped her, and, like, she helped me, and she's like, I paid rent, I paid bills, and I'm like, bitch, you contributed, like, a thousand dollars to my $4,300 rent, and, like, you didn't pay for parking, and you didn't pay for cable, and you didn't even stock toilet paper, and you had sex in my bed. Um... I love how much stocking supplies is like an ongoing trope on this show. Like, like if it weren't for me, there'd be no pen in the drawers. There'd be no toilet paper in the bathroom. People are really into toiletries on this show to prove things. <laughs> to prove that people are bad. You are bad with toiletry patrol. So, But also, she's paying you $1,000 to house That's not it. nothing. Like, I know that she gets somewhere to stay, but she's also, like, taking care of the apartment that you don't really live in so that you don't have to pay somebody to do it. I'm just, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm so flip-flopping all over the place, I know. but That's fine. You know, it's you can be podcast. wrong about most things, but also right about some things. And I think that's what's happening here. But at, back to James and Ali. James is like, anything else I should know about from this podcast? Like, yeah, she says that she was upset after your breakup and she wasn't over you and she never actually loved Tom, which is funny because that's like not what she was saying last summer. I wonder how Tom feels. A bit, 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 bit. A bit, 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 bit. A bit, bit, bit. Ali, stop trying to transition to a Tom scene. <laughs> Sorry. But they're funny. <laughs> so Sandoval's like, uh, oh, James is like, oh, well, Sandoval invited me to his his, his studio space. Uh, uh, because he's, uh, no, he, I'm going to his studio space because he's offered me the chance to open for his band at the El Rey. <laughs> 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 Listen, I understand that Tom has lied to me, and as I have to him. But at the end of the day... You got nothing for nothing, and that's all you can say for the life of the poor slut! A poor slut! <laughs> that's, that's all you can say for the life of the fat slut, stupid women! <laughs> I'm trying to figure out my relationship with Sandoval and our friendship, and was it ever real, and do we have anything that can be salvaged? And Ali's like, can we brighten this up? You're the one who brought it up over there. <laughs> I know, I know, little Miss Muppet. So she's like, she's like, this is really depressing. Here's something fun. Lala's doing a sperm donor party, which is so cool. Your friends get to pick out your baby. That's cool. The sperm pot is not for like two more days. You can't transition to it. <laughs> Can we line this up? Lala's going from having a baby with the guy with the casting couch to having a guy whose last load was like literally dropped on his couch. <laughs> Lala's going, Lala's going from having a baby on the casting couch to having a casting couch for the baby. No, don't do Seinfeld, Ali. <laughs> What's the deal with sperm donors? <laughs> <laughs> Ali, it's not enough for a joke. You can't transition. You got. You got to have something to go through that. All right, from the top, Ali. <laughs> Can we line this up? Lala's going from having a baby with a guy who eats cheesecake to a guy who is a cheesecake. Da na 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 na. What is that? The Golden Girls. <laughs> You can't just go to the ending. You can't just do that. Come on, Ali. All right. Can we just lighten this up? Lala's going from having a man who eats fried chicken to having sperm near fried chicken. Ba, 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 ba. It's the Golden Girls. You can't do the ending credits of Golden Girls. You can't conclude the show. We're at the first scene of the Papoos. We mean fried chicken to Golden Girls. They literally never had a fried chicken or Golden Girls. You fat slut. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Well, if you're going to do Golden Girls, at least use cheesecake and not fried chicken. Fried chicken has nothing to do with Fine, it. Fine, line it up yourself. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. Well, I'm getting to that age now, Ronnie, where I see myself on camera and I can see the back of my head. The hair is thinning out. And honestly, I mean, I have to imagine that the past few years, the stress in our world, in our lives has impacted it. 
I mean, your hair is never just about your hair, and Nutrafol knows that. It could be your job, your deodorant, your hormones. It could be almost anything that has almost nothing to do with your hair. And that's why Nutrafol takes a whole body approach to hair health, addressing the problems inside to help hair grow on the outside, supporting your lifestyle, not just your hairstyle. With Nutrafol, building a hair growth routine is simple. Purchase online, no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. See results in three to six months. Address your root causes of hair thinning with Nutrafol. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code CRAPINS. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com, promo code CRAPINS. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code CRAPINS. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie, and we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews, but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I, or download the app today. Okay, so then we go to um, Lala um, hanging out with Ariana. She's like, so I have something to ask you. Can I have my party for sperm donors at your house? Ariana's like, yeah, I would love to, um, but now that Anna's gone, things are really terrible in here. So we see footage of life without Anne, and it's just like boxes and sludge and, you know, just like... I mean, like hoarders, the producers at hoarders are like, wow, I, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know if we could touch that. Yeah, and hasn't really been there, but Billy Lee's crew's been over there a lot. So it probably already is kind of a sperm party. <laughs> Lala says, this is like a monumental moment in my life. And like, we're picking my like future my future childs and like who's gonna be part of my life until I die okay and like I want to take this science jargon out of it a little bit and then we see two weeks ago like when she was at the the sperm bank and she's like looking in a some sort of like cask that's overlooking frozen vials and then Brian the guy who's like really excited about this whole process is like look potential babies right there whoa that's a lot of science jargons that you're inserting into my baby's life right now <laughs> you said vials that is so much jargon. Can we just take the science out of this? <laughs> Wait, is that Nick Biles' sperm in theirs? I could do that. Podcast, podcast game, recognized podcast games. <laughs> Brian's like, I'll tell you, we don't have to call them Biles. We can call them future doctors, or we could call them past splooges. <laughs> I'm not really sure what you want, <laughs> but uh, I'll call them whatever you want. <laughs> I've dressed as Chuck E. Cheese for this one. Some people are into it. What can I tell you? <laughs> Now that vial down there, not gonna lie, that one's mine, and so is that one. I think they're all actually. His. They're all. I think they're all gonna <laughs> they're come all out his. as Brian. You know, they're little all Brian's. different little Brian's. <laughs> so Lala's like, I'm trying to figure out w- w- little ways where I can like look at this baby and say, you were brought, you were brought here from so much love, and like it may look different, but love is love. You don't get to take love as love. I know. Don't just love is love for your sperm process. I'm sorry, but you don't get love it. is love is what you say to like stop people from gay bashing people. <laughs> not to like you don't get to make yourself the ultimate like tread upon over here because you you fucked Randall once. <laughs> oh, by the way, we know that Lala was not married to Randall. Apparently, we keep saying that they were married or they got divorced or whatever. We do know that they weren't married. It's just I think she keeps acting like it so much that. They were, it's just that way in our heads for some reason. They were common slaw married, as in she had to endure him eating so much coleslaw with his fried chicken that they became she married. Had to endure such a commoner <laughs> slurping on slaw. Common slurp. She was the common slurp marriage. <laughs> After so many slurps, you just are officially married. <laughs> <It's> legally. <laughs> um, so um, she's like, yeah, love is love. <laughs> And so Ariana's like, no, my house is filthy. You can't use it. So Lala's going to ask Lisa to use her house instead. So Allie's like, we cut back to Allie and James. And Allie's like, this very party. <laughs> They're still in their scene. What? <laughs> They're still in their scene. I forgot they had more of this scene going. 
<laughs> That's what you get when you try to conclude it with the Golden Ghost theme song. Now look what you've done, Ali Bally. So she's like, the sperm party is going to be interesting because Lala has been really venting about Katie. And like, you know, um, we see a clip of uh, Ali tell or Lala telling Ali at that party. She's like, oh, my God. And like Katie's, it's like so unhappy slightly. And she goes, yeah. And they're like, so they're such intense personalities. I think they need to work it out. I agree. Come on, Ali. This is over. Now you're quiet. Doodly do. Doodly do. We're not going back in time, Ali. We already have to. That's friends. All right. It's a little better, at least. Why are you doing Magnum PI, Ali? All right, Ali. I'll give you that one. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, so now we go to Schwartz's, that. and um, he's like, oh, look at me, just a little boy in the house. Oh, it's such a big house, just a little boy. I'm gonna live in here. He's like, Gordo, I know that you thought, uh, I don't know what you think is going on here, but I just want to be friends, Gordo. I'm sorry, you have to walk yourself. I'm not your dad. Good luck. <laughs> Gordo's like, get the fuck out of my face. You've been flaking out on twit. the dog. <laughs> so Sandoval comes over all sad. He has to look up someone who's just listened to Bethany's podcast. Oh, God. And, he's got oh, his, man. like, super angry face on where he's, like, doing that, like, intense, like, open-eyed squint. Where he's like, oh, bro. I am sorry there's nothing in the fridge. Like, oh. <laughs> Slim pickings up and making a point to keep my fridge beautifully stocked and well merchandised. But it kind of fell apart the past few weeks. I'm a little boy. Oh, no. I used to at least have ranch in there, but Katie would overstay her welcome every time, so I had to get rid of it. Oh, and then Joseph took everything else because she said something like, quote unquote, I'm going to make my own Olive Garden now. Oh. So Sandoval's like, sorry, I'm just like really shell shocked right now. Like Raquel went on a podcast and I just listened to it and she was like, I wasn't in love with Tom. And she's acting as though like she somehow got like the worst out of everyone. And like, I made changes in myself thinking that <laughs> maybe one day like she would see all the work I had done on myself and like <laughs> she would appreciate it. Oh, the real victim is here. She did oh. get it worse than everybody else. How did she not? I mean, she definitely got it worse than you did. I don't know if she didn't get it worse than Ariana or them, but she yeah. definitely got it worse than you, you <laughs> Sandoval, shell shocked to hear that his fling was not a forever fling. Meanwhile, he's like has no time or space for Ariana being shell shocked over like massive deception, which he so already just, knows. He just wants to turn this into his own Scandoval, where he can be the victim of somebody right. not loving him anymore. You know, it's like, oh really? Yeah. You were hurt. Who's more hurt? Me, the real victim. Ah, oh, I got <laughs> dumped by my mistress. I know. <laughs> I wasn't like fully ready to give up hope until I heard it from her own lips to go through all that and like not even to give it a shot for me to then cheat on her later on. Like, what was it all for? <laughs> so then we go over to Tom Tom. Oh no, Schwartz, first of all, you know, Schwartz gives such helpful advice. He's like, I guess she just wants to be heard, you know, but it's over. It's been over. Ah, uh, would you walk Gordo? I, I just broke up with him. <laughs> so now we're at Tom Tom, and Lisa walks in like business, business. Ooh, Logan, there you are. Where are the Tom and the Toms? And Logan's like, um, are you ready for brunch? You don't get to speak on my show, Logan. He's like, oh well, uh, yeah, I'm excited about brunch. Okay, good. I'm, if you're gonna say something, then promote the brunch. Good. Oh, Tom. Tom will never be pump, nor do we want it to be. Little tiny shrimp on salads can only live in one restaurant, and Tom Tom is not the place for it. But we can develop the restaurant part of Tom Tom and add brunch to the menu. We want to keep the spirit alive, which is why we've brought crazy gays over and changed their shirts. <laughs> we are serving pancakes in the shape of pumptinis. <laughs> so Schwartz is like, oh, well, oh, my God, my friends. Hi, I just walked in. Oh, no. Can we just get the hair out of the way first? Are you going to keep that hair or shall I shave it off you? Oh, Vanderpump Villa now on Hulu. So Logan's like, oh, my God, you're bleach blonde. That 
fucking turns me off. Okay, stop speaking. Get to the back, please. <laughs> Schwartz is like, um, so Sandoval is 30 minutes late, which he's always late. And anybody, you know, I, I think the word narcissist is overused. I think, especially since Salt Lake City, everyone's like, oh my God, a narcissist. I know a narcissist because I've dated my, everybody's mother is a narcissist and everybody has dated every narcissist in the world. Like it's overused at this point, is my point. Tom is definitely a narcissist though. Yeah. And you know he is because this is the classic trait of a narcissist, constantly being late constantly yeah it, that is really a sickness where you're just going out of your way to say fuck you to everybody else around you yeah oh can i say something i'm a little worried about tom after that podcast came out i think he listened to it in hopes that raquel would say something nice and logan's like she didn't quiet Unless you've been in an opening credit and not named after an airport, I don't want to hear from you. Listen, okay, as long anyway. as she's safe and well, who cares what she's got to say? I mean, listen, the only thing worse than what Raquel did is letting Bethany Frankel profit off of it instead of me. That's the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate betrayal. And Logan's like, well, I'm sure he still has feelings for it. What? How many times? Okay, everyone who is not a dipshit who keeps on speaking, step forward that's you logan and he's so schwartz is like oh well i just told him yesterday the affair's over people are moving on but of course it's over she's been away for three months i thought i thought you know he was in a lot be better place to be honest i'm sad so then um tom sandoval comes in he's like sorry i was dealing with a lot like being the most pained person in the world hey, is there anybody else here who's no longer in love with me just let me know now <laughs> <laughs> so tom says you're really unhappy because you listen to some podcast by some strange wiry lady is that true <laughs> what she said about me is bullshit it's bullshit i can't believe you said that i can't even believe i'm even listening to it but i need to because i need to know what's being said about me lisa lisa it's like why are you even listening Come on, i have to lisa it's like, I love when he like sob yells at Lisa for asking simple questions. <laughs> but why don't you not look? <laughs> I don't want Sandoval to start spiraling after we just got him to a place where he's evening out. What could Raquel possibly have even said that is going to make anybody look at him in a better light? Oh, we all think he's awful, right? Anyone? <laughs> No. So then um, uh, she's like, don't listen anymore. You're just going to torture yourself with parts two, three, four, five, six, seven. And Rachel gone rogue. Rachel gone to the circus. Rachel eating cereal. <laughs> oh, it's a podcast extravaganza. God damn, Bethany Frankel. I curse the day that woman ever found shellfish in a bag. <laughs> well... By the way, I've got news, which is that uh, Ariana did accept the offer, but now I'm like debating whether or not to sell or buy or like to sell the house or not. Cause like my offer was like two months ago and like my thoughts have like maybe changed. And he says, it's such a piece of course they have. Guy. Of course. He's like, well, Ariana took so long to get back to me that like now I'm on the fence. Of, like what? I am the fence. What? I don't, what was that? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm on the fence about whether to, I want to keep it all or like keep the house. Basically, he's like, he realized, oh, if I have to buy Ariana out, I actually have to have money to do that. And I don't think I can do that. So maybe I should sell this house. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what's happening. Because, you know, his offer, which he said, oh, it's full market value. It's probably full market value from like six years ago or whatever, mm -hmm. paid in installments over the course of 50 years. <laughs> Something <laughs> insane. Yeah. So she's like, just sell it. And Schwartz's like, yeah, it's going to be, I'm going to be done with her for life, you know? So then Lala walks in. She's like, hey, everyone, everyone's good. Okay. Everyone's good. And Lisa goes, no. Oh, oh, okay. Well, may I host a sperm donors party in, in your homes tomorrow? I promise it'll be really sweet and lovely. Well, there's going to be sperm all over my house. It's not even Ken's birthday, darling. Get it. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Listen, Lisa, no one's jerking off anywhere, so, okay? So, so, and Schwartz's like, are we invited? No. The only thing that comes from the straight men is the cums. <laughs> um, so, let's see. So, LVP is like, I don't want people throwing sperm in my house. 
She's like, I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say here, <laughs> Lisa. She's like, but they'll be sperming in my house. No, Lisa. No, I know Pandy wears pashminas everywhere, but they're not to spooge on to. They're actually <laughs> flowy and gorgeous. They're not to be used as Kleenex. I just broke Rosie of that habit. She would just no. walk up right behind Pandora and sneeze right into her every time. I said, have some respect. Not for pa not for Pandora, really. Sneeze into her face, but not the pashmina, darling. I got that in body. No, Lisa, it's going to be a very beautiful sperm party, okay? I have the catering already happening for this party that I have not already planned at your place that you haven't already given me permission to. The catering's already been planned, and I have balloons. And, like, you'll each get a packet, and then you'll vote. On the balloons, no, on the sperms. I can't follow this party, it's so difficult. When does Ken jizz? <laughs> We're not even close to Christmas. Get it! <laughs> and so then Le <coughs> I'm choking up. I'm literally like dying now. So Lisa's like looks away disappointed. You have to talk. I can't talk right now. <laughs> so Lala's like, Lisa, I'm gonna be edgy, okay? I'm having a cum party. Gross, darling. <laughs> Alright, I'm having a splooge splooge fest. <laughs> Disgusting. Alright, we're shitting shots. It's like jizz 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 on jackets. Darling! I'm even getting mac and cheese catered because it looks like jizz. <laughs> Darling, please! <laughs> so everyone else is going to choose your donor? Including you. And Lisa just sort of like looks away and she goes, like, Lisa, allow me to be excited about this, okay? Because like I'm already like freaking excited. Lisa. And she goes, all right, fine. I give you, poor person, my rich person, blessing. You can have your sperm party as long as I can make sure there are five planters in the middle of the table that no one splooges on. As long as the father got enough to buy a <clears throat> CD or something afterwards. Mm. <laughs> I love her disappointment <laughs> and just like going to find sperm. It's so funny to me. Lala's like, how dare you judge me? <laughs> Darling, so, <laughs> you're basically having a baby so a man could buy a hot and ready. <laughs> What did Phaedra say? <laughs> Phaedra say? All I do know is that that man needed it like like five dollars to buy like a hot like a pizza. <sighs> so that now we got a Tom and Ariana's house. Laughing at that, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I will laugh at it even if it wasn't even my even if you're trying to frame me. <laughs> so uh, Sheena and Brock go over to Ariana's house, and um, Ariana's like. Well, hi guys. Welcome to this disgusting pit of humanity. Ugh. Logan was at TomTom Tom earlier and he said that now Sandoval's having second thoughts and he might want to sell the house, which is what I wanted from the beginning. And Logan also said that Lisa um, locked him in a back closet for talking too much, which was also really weird. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we? So they're at, we're at uh, Tom and our, uh, I was reading Sheena and Brock. Okay, yeah. Oh, so okay. Sheena and Brock come over. Sorry, everybody. Uh, so Ariana is like, yeah. So Logan was with Tom at, or he was at Tom Tom earlier, and now guess what? Tom's having second thoughts, and he might want to sell the house, and that's what I wanted from the beginning. This could have already happened. And they're like, oh, well, you need to clean up with some mess around, yeah, yeah. So they they're gonna go clean up. Because this place is a total mess. And Ariana, meanwhile, saying that um, uh, Tom is also apparently going through it about the podcast. Because Logan reported everything to Ariana. Of course. And that's why you have a gay in every in every place you go. You have to have your gay there. And Lala has hers over there, too. And hers is also the Logan, who we also we always yes. see bopping behind her, just taking notes. You know, like little court reporters <laughs> over there. It would be funny if their names were like... Robert and Steven, and just like the show's like, I don't know, we just call the gays Logan. <laughs> like, my name's Robert, though. Um, so, so Brock's like, Well, if Tom's having a hard time with the episode one and two, guess what? Part four is dropping tomorrow, which I love that, like, the episode's just like, just Bethany just squeezing out all that she can from Scandaval while equally, you know complaining about reality tv and how it's like the 
the the nadir of humanity, and yet she is fully and how abusive it is it. to people, especially mm-hmm. women, when she takes someone probably in their most vulnerable state ever and just squeezes them for money. And you know, she's just telling Raquel every or Rachel every day, like, "I really." So, what are you going to talk about now? You know, you know what you should talk about. How you didn't love him in the first place? Ah, uh, you did love him. You didn't. You didn't. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you like she's got to be. She's got to be filling this girl's head with so much crap that Raquel is still going on for this long every week. Yeah. So she's she like, knows, like I just wanted to say, um, on Rachel goes rogue. I'm eating. I love fish. It's fish in a bag, in an ice bucket, in a hotel. No, no, no. I'm eating. All right, you're doing it right. You're doing it right. Say this is crazy. Fish in a bag. This Say is everything crazy. I hated in France. <laughs> everything I hated in France. <laughs> so uh, Sheena's like, by the way, just out of nowhere, um, I have a new song with the 27s, and it's called Apples. And then we see Sheena like singing a lyric where she goes, from a Ferrari to a Jenna, I thought you knew better. <laughs> I thought it was going to be about the Apple Vision Pro. I thought it was going to be about the enormous iPad I once saw her holding uh, at the Grove. She's like, yeah, I got to go to the Apple store. iPhones, iPad, I want them real bad. They're apples. <laughs> <laughs> What's my iOS? You're the one who's a mess. Apple, Apple, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> You're so bad at this, right? I'm never gonna update. I'm not both. <laughs> hey, I went from Yosemite to Siena. So tell me when ya gonna get into my car. <laughs> Apple, Apple, is not Apple. just where Randy grew up, <laughs> it's apples. <laughs> <laughs> it's apples. Apple, apple, apple. Because I just put this on iTunes. <laughs> because I look in your eyes, that makes me swoons. Apple, apple, apple. I'm apple. drinking a Paloma <laughs> while updating Sonoma. It's apples. It's apple. <laughs> it's apple. <laughs> apple, apple, apple. You're not making my final cut because I'm a pro. Apples, apples, apples. I won't take apples. this crap. I'm deleting the app. I'm apples. <laughs> Okay. Apple, apple, apple. I'm running out of storage. <laughs> I'm out of storage. So, therefore, <laughs> for my food, I will forage. Apple, 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 apple. <laughs> All right. Commercials. Here comes one right now. The Coca-Cola Company, Keurig Dr. Pepper, and PepsiCo are bringing consumers more choices with less sugar than ever before. From sparkling, flavored, and bottled waters to zero-sugar sports drinks, teas, and sodas, consumers are taking advantage of these choices. In fact, nearly 60% of beverages sold contain zero sugar. To learn more, visit balanceus.org. Sheena is like, okay, well, the song that I, when I first wrote, it was only about Raquel, but then we wanted to extend the second verse, and we had some lines, and they were directed at Tom, so, ooh. No, I'm just, like, trying to take a traumatic experience and turn it into, like, a nice piece of art. It's, like, very therapeutic and very catchy. You know, the sort of art where you rhyme Jetta with better. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then Brock is like, oh, what are the boxes? And she's like, um, my mental state is best in cleaner spaces, which is why I'm still writing songs about somebody else's affair that has nothing to do with me for a career that really didn't take off, but um, is led by a band named after the last year that I was alive when this dream was really an actual possibility. <laughs> you know what, like, Ariana, you have, like, a lot on your shoulders, um, even though you're interview look is an off the shoulder look but like whatever and like you seem like you can like you're doing amazing on instagram like you know i like we see your instagram you got like amazing boyfriend you're on dancing with the stars which by the way can you just put your my name into it because i think we all know that situation and like there's just like a lot that you're dealing with like you know dancing with the stars like maybe you're not cut out for it after all maybe like you need someone to sub in like maybe that could be me i don't know i just like wanted to come over and see if there was like anything i can help you with like the pass dope play i don't know i've just been training tell them i'm not obsessed at all which is why i didn't make a song about Dancing with the Stars. I'm really trying to get onto Dancing with the Cars now, which is why I'm writing rhyming things with Jada. So, 
whatever. It Wait doesn't affect me at all. Have fun on your little show. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I just am writing, you know, some, like, cartoons. Cartoons. Wait a second. Cartoons, car play, car... Brock, I need a pad! <laughs> <laughs> apple, 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 apple. <laughs> apples. Because they can they're apples. So then um, she's going through all this stuff. This house is a mess. Neither of these people are very clean people. And this does show that they really do need personal assistance to keep their life together. Because otherwise, it's pure shit. And Ariana's yeah. like, well, but this is because this is all his stuff. None of it's mine. I'm not cleaning it. Yeah. But none of it's none of it's great. Just get a maid. That's that's my advice to to both. Yeah, of you. that's the other thing. Maids make people happier, you know. She, yeah. So Sheena's like, um, I've always known Tom and Ariana's house to be on the messier side. But if it's so messy now that she's not even wanting to have people over, like that worries me that maybe she's falling into a dark place and maybe shouldn't be on Dancing with the Stars in the first place. You know, I'm just I don't know. It's just saying things out loud. I mean, if you've got time to lean, you've got time to le- clean, but you definitely don't have time to double. <laughs> it definitely takes two to tango, um, which I don't think Ariana truly appreciates, despite being on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> How are you going to spin ducks if you can't even win ducks? All right? <laughs> All right, guys. So now Brock, Brock and Sheena just get into cleaning and organizing. They're just, like, going through stuff. And apparently there's, like, a room with tons and tons of stuff that's just been lying there i think that just doesn't make it onto camera and she knows just pulling out stuff she's like um christmas present has this been here since like last christmas it's like august right now and ariana's like but i'm saving it <laughs> they're like no yeah so it's it's kind of gross and she just sits there and watches them which i mean i guess they have to do something it is a shortened season but um i mean wow you can see why. Yeah. Okay, so now we go to sandoval's rehearsal and this is when i had to turn off the show for my own mental health i literally turned off the television, and I went to the store. I couldn't stay here <laughs> because yeah. this is what it is. It cuts to sound of all, and you just hear, ah! <laughs> birds started crashing He's into doing- my window. It was like the emergency broadcast system. I was like, is that an Amber Alert? What the fuck is happening? Yeah, he's doing some weird sort of falsetto with his, like, child band. And he's like, we don't want to sit and wait for fun. You can have any time you want. And he's wearing a t-shirt that says Dipped Out, which is a direct reference to the lie he told his friends and Ariana about, like, him and Raquel. Like, it's a, it's like a t-shirt that's, like, broadcasting and leaning into the affair that he claims to be so tortured from. Well, yeah, so, that's the thing. Like, he's sitting here crying on the show like he can't believe anybody's trying to profit off this scandal when he's totally doing it. I mean, my God. Exactly. And, like, we have I feel like every time we brought up, like, oh, he's wearing the Thunder thing or whatever, it's largely happened off camera. And so this is something where he's, like, on TV, knowing the cameras are there, and he's wearing a shirt, like, in defiance, right? So he's doing this little rehearsal and everything, and James walks in with Hippie, and James is like, oh, so what's going on? Like, you've been the talk of the town today, so have you. Oh, well, Hippie's been the talk of the town. Guess what? I'm Bethany Franklin, some woman. And so have you. You've been the talk of the town the past couple of days. Are you all right there, old man? How are you doing, you stupid fat slut? It's been a tough couple of days, I can't lie, which is why right now I was rehearsing that song, and had to use a fog machine for the end. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> I know. Really, you're using you're a rehearsal. fog machine on yourself at rehearsal, you fucking douche. So um, James feels like a little bad for him. So he just is going to talk to him and everything uh, because James has been there. You know, Raquel went on to shenanigans and talked shit about him. So he knows what it's like to be maligned by a bad guest. He's like, I know how much he's been going through as well. And huh, Ariana would slap me if I said that too loud. Sorry, I'm a best in the bottom of the world. So Sandoval's like, dude, throughout this process, I like really tried to look out for Raquel. And like, I'm realizing now that I cared for her like way more than she cared for me, dude. Like, dude, I'm like listening to the shit coming out of her mouth. And I'm like, it's fucking bullshit. It's like so goddamn disrespectful, man. As he wears the dipped out t-shirt. I know. He's like, I didn't care for her so much. I was trying to get her to leave mental health, (laughs) her mental health therapy. And come back on a reality TV show so we can get ratings. I just don't understand, dude. It's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful as he is trying to actively kick Ariana out of the house after he's the one who cheated. Yeah. yeah. It's like she used me and now she's throwing me away. Throwing me away. <laughs> 
Gosh, that hasn't happened to anyone else in this cast or in your household, has it? The only so, thing that a cut made this better was a cutaway to Ariana holding the Glad trash bags or whatever. What, what was the trash <laughs> bag? It wasn't Glad. It was the other one. A hefty? Yeah. So James is like, look, I just want this all in my past, okay? After the breakup, I went and lived my own life. I just seem like all of this comes to, to haunt me, and I just don't want to sit here and talk about Raquel. I'm done. I'm done with this shit, okay? I'm done. I'm done. And Sandoval's like, look, okay? I didn't even get any sort of closure, man. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. Uh, so he's like, oh, God, fuck closure. She's working on herself. That's why. You can get closure from that, are you? And he's like, yeah, well, come on, bro. I mean, like, she was working on herself when she broke up with you. Like, she's, like, so selfish. Like, and she was selfish getting involved with me. I was like, oh, wow. She's the one who saw, I mean, like, look, I don't want to now take up for Raquel. It, but now he's turning it into she cheated. The way she acted towards James is now victimizing sandoval wow and but also like that sandoval is accusing raquel of being the selfish one in this duo when he was the one who was <laughs> who cheated he was the one who didn't even want to like end one relationship and move on to the other he wanted to have the best of both worlds and then he accuses raquel of being the selfish one okay, and then he's it. like and she also said that back in the day when she asked you to stop drinking and said she would break up with you she if you didn't stop drinking that she only said that because she assumed you'd never stop drinking so she so uh she would get to break up with you that actually made, made me feel bad for raquel this? That made me feel bad for Raquel because it made me feel like she was trapped in a situation where she that was the only way she felt like she could get out of it, you know? Yeah. No, I Were you saying what bad. kind of person? No, no just still not. Oh, wait, about... I tried. <laughs> Did you see? I tried for a minute. I was like, hold on, let me try to feel No, I'm saying in that yeah. instance, I'm like, Sandoval's trying to say that. I'd be like, look how selfish she is. She would say that because she just didn't have to believe you could stop drinking. It's like, yeah, but let's not forget James was terrible to Raquel during that time as well. So James is yeah, like, but he's wait, also you're... just like, oh, James, you're not mad. Okay. You don't want to talk shit about Raquel. Oh, okay. Well, she never even liked you and was trying to break up with you. Like, he's just so gross. He's a disgusting fucking yeah. person. Man. Oh, Sorry. I think I, I, I because there was like so many different people to be disgusted by at any given moment. I wasn't totally, I think I thought you were disgusted by someone else and something else than what you were all disgusted about because it's really hard to tell <laughs> in this lazy season of office. Oh my God. Man. So then James is like, okay, okay, old man, you're going to try to make me feel bad. Well, guess what? She also said on the podcast that she was never in love with you, and she got with you because she wasn't quite over me. So, you know, I, I wouldn't put too much thought into that one, butter. And he slaps Sandoval on the shoulder like, nice try. Nice try. You're going to try and go low with James? Like, James is the master of that. And so <laughs> yeah. uh, he's like, well, I don't believe you were ever in love, and I think it was a fuck fest for six months. And he's like, do <laughs> We would sit there for five hours talking about the need for batteries and drawers and pens. And oh, you would just get horny. Stocking, bro. No, whatever. You just got, would get horny. That's what you would do. You wouldn't get it from Ariana. So you'd go downstairs and get your willy really sucked by Raquel. That's all. You have no idea what you're talking about, bro. I would literally go to her house and we would literally spend like literally five or like literally six like literal hours together. And if we had for sex, I would just be like a little bit out of like literally the time that we were spending. I was like a small percentage of the time. <laughs> And James pats him on the shoulder again and goes, yeah, but you're a liar, though, Tom. You're a liar. You're, you're a liar. liar. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Like, That's just, just facts, though. You're a liar. He goes, no, it's not the facts. It's your opinion. Your opinions are not fact. Fact. I look hot in fog machines. Opinion. <laughs> I forgot. I'm, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> Finley, I'm a bad guy. Fat. It was I cry whenever too, I though. see window sills. Hold on, there's a window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what? What you and Ariana had was true love, bro. Like, you don't know, man. You don't know. Uh, bro, you looked me dead in the eyes for years and talked to how much you fucking love that girl. And he's like, but I did love her. I did. It's just like she can't keep up with the batteries. I mean, what are you going to do, bro? He's like, oh, my God. It's like you forget what you've even said, Tom. That's how much you like. Shut up, bro. <laughs> Re rewrite history in your mind and have all the fun you want in your fucking band. I'm not opening for you at this fucking L. Ray because I've moved on to bigger and better things. My dog is named Tippy because I know George Michael. 
<laughs> this is a joke to me. I gotta go. Bye. I like and he goes, goes. This is a joke. Your band is a joke to me. Just like hands to the band, and it just shows the band looking all sad. Like we're getting paid to be here. How dare you, sir? Like, a joke. We were told we would be going to Coachella. No, you're not. You stupid fucking stupid fat people. Um, that was Alcella. <laughs> James goes, he can't let go of the past, can he? I'm just waiting for him to get the clue. Or maybe he never will. I can see it now. He's like 75 at the rock and roll bar and sunset doing karaoke and be like, boom, a dick flew comes out of the pocket. And he's like, I used to play this on national television. It's just like, dude, shut the fuck up. I'm like, that was a pretty accurate read, I would have to say. <laughs> That's going to be what it is. But it's also kind of funny that he's like dissing CBGB because he lives in the valley now. He's like, disgusting. Play get a rock bar on sunset. <laughs> <laughs> in the Sam, valley we have push. sidewalks and medians <laughs> when we play a gig we're playing at islands burger bar so sandoval's like yeah well go push buns on your laptop what was that you heard me say it to my face bro buns on laptops apple 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 oh sorry don't call my band a joke dude i'm singing about this later <sighs> You know, I mean, the jo- the joke is ultimately on Sandoval because say what you will about James Kennedy, he did play, he did open up at the Neon Festival at Coachella and Taylor Swift was in attendance. So he can say both, I play Coachella and he can also say, I played for Taylor Swift because did you see the video of Taylor Swift reacting to um, his remix of Cruel Summer? No. So uh, someone took a video from like outside of the VIP area of Taylor Swift, like hanging out and James Kennedy is playing Cruel Summer. It's like, you know, and Taylor Swift is like singing along to her own song and she's having the best time singing her song. And then James starts to remix it and starts going, and she just like gets this look on her face, like, what the fuck are you doing to my song? And she like looks at the stage, like, what is happening here? <laughs> Who is doing that? Who is that scrawny, unfamous person destroying my song? <laughs> That's funny. I thought it was going to be a hero story. Like, oh my God. And then she loved it. And then she put her, ha- her arm in the air and started like dancing and like mouthing the words. Well, I mean, there was a lot of debate online about like, was she really mad or was she just surprised because she wasn't expecting the remix to kick in at that moment? Was she delighted? To me, it looked like she was like, What the fuck? Mm, (laughs) Taylor Swift does have that kind of look on her face, though, at all times. She's got a what the fuck kind of, what the fuck? She's got a what the fuck kind of look on her face because she's got those squinty eyes. She's just always like. Yeah. I, I never felt bad for Taylor Swift until this Coachella seeing how she's been tortured by these Bravo celebrities who've invaded her space. <laughs> yeah. Between Teresa and James Kennedy, this is Taylor Swift deserves better. Yeah, I think so. But you know what? We don't have any better. <laughs> this is what you get. <laughs> Just suck it up. There are there are ambassadors. The rest of us don't have velvet ropes separating us, okay? We actually have to be on the ground with these people. So Villa Rosa, Lala sperm donor party. Who's lost their sperm all over my cat? Oh, sorry, it's just Pashmina's. Uh, this is just Pandora's Pashmina. Rosia, <laughs> would you take this to Pandora? Who let the sperm out? Woof, woof, woof. So um, there's like it's like a very Vanderpump party. It's like very floral garden party chateau chic you know the usual like gaudy overuse of flowers and everything but it's all for like picking out sperm donors and there's like a cocktail list that says who's your daddy who's your daddy menu and uh lala's like i think that like everyone should like come in they can like mingles and they can like talks and then like once we have like some full bellies pun intended we're gonna play pin the sperm on the vaginas and lisa's like oh god why did I sign up for this? Such a cringy, such a cringy party. So the girls come with the gays, and Lala's like, I'm just a couple of hours away from choosing my baby's daddy. I have so many people who are supportive of me and love my daughters, and I just know that we're going to love on this new baby, whether or not it's got the spirit of Tupac inside of it. 
Um, oh, wait, one quick thing, because since you said Tupac, it made me think about Coachella again, which is that someone wrote a comment saying, like, I wonder if Taylor realized she was listening to the white Kanye West, which whoever said that, you are a very funny person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so oh, Jenna, we have some more Jenna times. Jenna's having a big season on Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, how have She's they like, not made her oh, full time? She goes, I know. Oh, my God, we're going to see men. We're going to see men. Get it? See men. See men. See men. I usually save this for my like <laughs> yoga laughs sessions, uh, which is going really well. <laughs> Ellie's like, do you need me to do some Seinfeld to punctuate that? No. Okay. Hey, why did the jo- why did the dog jump up on the giraffe? I don't know, but down dog, down dog, everybody. Down <laughs> As someone who took a yoga class last night, this is hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> the yoga teacher is like, there's no better way to say it. You just have to look like you're humping the air, everyone. Humping the air. <laughs> Seaman. So Ali Bali is checking on Katie because she heard it was heated at girls' night. So Ali's like, um, it sounded like you were a little miserable and getting upset about a lot of things really easily, Katie. <laughs> and Katie goes, I'm miserable and getting upset about things easily. Who said that as she's actively miserable, miserable and getting upset? Getting about upset easily. easily. <laughs> at a party, at a pink party at Vanderpump's house, which is like a girly, frilly baby shower. Everybody is literally in pink. <laughs> Katie's in like a black Stevie Nicks outfit. Like, what do you mean Katie's I'm miserable? Leaning, <laughs> she is leaning into emo this season. I was dying laughing. She's actually cracking me up so much this year. It's like, what do you mean I'm miserable? Uh, Ali goes, I think it's pretty clear you're miserable. <laughs> yeah. And she goes, well, who said I'm miserable? And she goes, um, la la. Oh, also, it's cracking me up. Allie has some weird thing where she's like not emotionally affected by anything. And it is so hilarious to watch because she does not even care. The producers are like, okay, here's what you need to do. What? Go tell Katie. She's miserable. Okay. Katie, you're miserable. What? Yeah. Who said it? La la. Go get her. Like <laughs> Allie does not give a fuck about anything. Cause I'm a girl's girl. I'm from a small town. Don't understand highways. So, uh, by the way, Ali's song sounds a lot like I Just Want to Grow Up. I'm just going to put that out there. Just putting that out there. Like I'm a Toys R Us kid or the Melania? The Melania. Sort of all the same, if you think about it. Um, so now we'll go back. We cut back over to Ariana's house where Tom Schwartz comes over and Sandoval's sitting in a chair moping. And we see Craig, Tom's new assistant, who we saw briefly last week. And Schwartz's like, oh, my God, Craig, are you like, are you guys like a duo now? You guys kind of like match. That's amazing. He's like, yeah, like, yeah. We're and Craig's like, yeah, we're together all the time. Craig, you got time to stream. You got time to broom, bro. Good to <laughs> clean in, sir. <laughs> yeah, I first met Craig because he was like a bartender at Schwartz and Sandy's. And like things didn't like work out with Anne. So like Craig is like coming on board. And like if anything, like this guy can be like my stunt double. It's pretty cool. Just don't tell Jojo Siwa because I think she'd be kind of offended if she realizes she's carrying Craig on her back instead of me. So, so. Clea Duval is busy. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> she's on Top Chef these days. Yeah, it was crazy seeing Clea Duval on Top Chef. She really does still I, look like Tom. I know. What was her challenge again? Was that the one with the doors? No, it wasn't. Was it the Frank Lloyd Wright challenge? No, it was the week. No, I think actually it was. It was the balls, wasn't it? The the ball the the. Uh, why can I not remember the croquettes? Was that the one where Clea Duvall? I, but Clea Duvall judged something. They had to do. It wasn't it a maybe, quick fire? It was a quick fire. I think it was a quick fire. Yeah, unfortunately, she hasn't won enough Oscars to do an elimination <laughs> challenge. Bless her soul, Clea. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, Schwartz comes over, and so does his terrible haircut, who's like its own person now. And so they sit together, and um, Sandoval's like, uh, yeah, um, I have a proposition for you. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, don't say it. No, you're going to have to make, you're going to make me say my favorite word. What's that? The optics. The optics are horrible for me. So basically. Wait a minute, you have, an, you have a proposition. Oh, wait a minute. 
I can stay in your house and you can stay in my house and it'll be like a vacation and neither one of us is really excited for it, but then we both fall in love with other people and Kate Winslet plays me? No, dude, you can move in with me. Oh, the optics of no! that are t- <laughs> No! The optics are terrible! I'm already working through this blonde hair! He's like, no, they're not, dude! He's like, oh man, someone will make voodoo dolls of me and pin them! Yeah, didn't someone already do that? <laughs> yeah, Katie. Katie did. Ow! I just got pinned by her. <clears throat> um, so it's like, what would be my rent? Oh, it's only six grand, bro. He's like, I can't pay six grand. Oh, six grand. Oh, my God. He's like, you pay 4500 a month now, bro. You pay $4,500 for that apartment for that? in the valley? Are you nuts? What is That's happening in that wild. Town? That is crazy. <laughs> Oh, I cannot, in good conscience, put 6K towards something that I'm not going to get a return on. It's like, well, you put a lot of money into your marriage, so there's that too. Oh, but I'm not building equity in here. And, and your you never bar. had it there either. <laughs> and your other <laughs> and bar. And your bar. And your hair. Oh, I'm a little boy. <laughs> your bar that you don't really own because your oh. business partner owns it. Oh. Both bars. Oh. Oh. Optics are horrible. Oh my God, the optics are terrible. So um, he's like, they would call us two income poops. And he's like, no, they wouldn't, bro. They'd be like, you guys are cool. It's like, no. Oh my God, we're the girls. This is the first time I've ever wanted to hang out with the girls. Are they at the sperm donor party? <laughs> yeah, they're at Jizz Fest. Come on, you're supposed to laugh at that assistant. <laughs> you can't say that. The optics are so bad. Meanwhile, no. Lala's like, swallow or walla, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna's like, see, men, because I'm seeing men. Why is no one laughing at this joke yet? Uh, uh, okay, everyone, before we start picking the donors and going through our binders, I want to play a little game. Okay, so I've got sperms up here, and I want to first say thank yous for helping me pick a donor. You're all here because I love you so much. And oh, oh my gosh, I'm actually getting like emotional so already about to play. I can't believe me. Introducing the pin the sperm on the vaginas game is making me emotional right now. Yeah, she's like, guys, because it's this one good thing I've got at in my life. It's that I'm a good mama. I'm a good mama. <laughs> like, oh my God, you're such a good mama. You are such a good mama. So, yeah, I'm a good mama. Mama, see me bellies. Me bellies. So I'm a mama. <laughs> so she's like, this is fun, but obviously we're picking my baby daddy right now. So let's pin <laughs> the sperm on the vaginas. Oh no, how did I get roped into this? This is so wild. Absolutely not. I'm not secretly aroused by this whatsoever. Oh dear. So, how am I supposed to know where a vagina is? I can't even find mine. Ah! Ken looks for it, well, when he's allowed to, twice a year. Get it! <laughs> Here's one more, one more. He's used to fumbling around in the dark. Maybe he'd do a better job at this game. ha boop a doop a doop a doop a doop That's how you do it, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> so then um, um, people play the game, and it's, you know, it's like kind of cringe. And um, Lala's like, okay, bitches and guess, let's pick a fucking donors. Now I want you to meet Brian. Brian's with the... California cryobank. And Brian's like, hey, everybody, just want you to know I just spooged in one of these vials. <laughs> okay, it's, <laughs> it's the mystery spin. It's the mystery spin. <laughs> yeah, so he's at cryobank, which is actually not a bank where you deposit your tears, which is making me a little sad. So, okay, first <laughs> is donor number one. I'm, I could have just made a deposit with all of my, I'm a good mama's tears. But. <laughs> I know, I'm getting emotional now. I'm picking the mints. Okay, donors number ones. Okay, he's like, re- okay, he really has it all. He's tall, he's six two, and he has an athletic build. Okay, and he's also kind, polite, and friendly, which we all know are genetic traits. And he's also has a gentle demeanor. <laughs> I'm like, gentle. What is what is the um, what is the genetic sequence for gentle and and calm <laughs> and polite? Also, I gentle don't that- people don't call themselves gentle. I'm telling you that yes. right now. You know who's called gentle? Dogs that bite you from the pound. <laughs> <laughs> like he's gentle, usually, usually gentle. Um, if only Emily Post knew that she didn't have to write these books. She just had to like, <laughs> just had to look for the genetic coding for being polite. Yeah, that's all you really need. 
So um, we all know that they're going to pick this guy because this is Bravo, and the only thing anybody cares about is height. And this guy's yeah. six foot two, so he wins, and he's thin. So yeah, for look, I this is unfair to do to your other child. I haven't even seen your other child, so I'm not shaming your other child. I'm just saying you can't have one Rand baby and then another six foot two model baby. That's just not fair. You need to it's like not. is ask Danny DeVito if his sperm is available. You can't just be giving <laughs> yeah. your children such an uneven life. Okay. Yeah, we've seen that movie. Um, so she knows like, oh my god. Like, it's literally starring Danny DeVito. It literally she is. Like, <laughs> that's Wins. what I thought you were referencing. I, I wasn't, but I mean, I guess I was without knowing it. But yeah, it's uh, it's that. And also, when you're telling it on national TV, going, I just want one baby that's mine. Like, you can't <laughs> do like that. That's it's like, messed up. that's that's the, the, the other one's rants. This one's mine. It's tall. Mine's the tall ones. <laughs> she's literally acting like she's a musician doing a solo act. Rams, so she knows like baby is the one slapping people with fried chicken breasts. <laughs> Mine is the one over here winking at everybody. Looks kind of, kind of winking like Brandon's now that I think about it. <laughs> so Sheena's like, oh my god, Bachelor number one, his favorite song is Grown Ocean, and his favorite animal is Lion. We're done here. I'm like, yes, two more things that will genetically be passed down is a favorite song is Grown Ocean. <laughs> yeah. So now don donor number two is, um, he's got a master's degree. Okay, which he probably paid for by coming. And um, <laughs> yeah. Allie's like, oh, my God, it's a master's in art history. What a sag. <laughs> oh, I like this number, too, because his family, his his favorite animal is a dog. You got to have this guy. I'm like, wow, I can't believe they found someone whose favorite animal is a dog. I, it's like needle in a haystack. Am I right? This baby's going to be like, I like sugar. Like, oh, what a deep, different baby you've got. <laughs> but Ariana does not like this guy. Ariana's like, um, word of advice for all potential sperm donors when you're filling out your profile, be thorough and heartfelt in your answers because you are in it. Because are you in it for the right reasons? It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> Real syntax burn right there. She's already ready for her Love Island gig. Why are you even here? <laughs> So um, the next one, donor number three, has a major in accounting and finance, and his biggest passion is cooking. And Lala, Lala's mom goes, that's great because you don't cook. It's like, what, you can have the baby make the meals? <laughs> Lala's like, we're not shopping for the mats, just the sparks. So now it's time to vote, and Allie's like, this is so hard, Lala. Until it uh, gave you the sample. <laughs> then it went down for a while. <laughs> and then it came back up. Because that's how I was built, ladies. Brandon, please please stop touching the vagina on the pin the sperm on the vagina. Poster. <laughs> We're voting now. So I guess if I have to explain it, the joke is that semen, because I'm visually seeing men, but the thing that comes out of the boner is called semen. I just, I, I feel like it was a good joke, everyone. It was a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> so of course they choose no, uh, um, donor number one and they're like oh my god Lala's like oh my god you guys I have my freaking donors and Katie's just like clapping like Nicole Kidman she has her like fingers like magnetically opposed from each other and Katie's Lala's like plan. I literally hate this party <laughs> she hates everything about it <laughs> She's like, Please Katie's the only one who back. realizes <laughs> Katie's the only one realizes that all three donors are Brian <laughs> you guys are stupid it's just him She's like I just saw that guy coming into a vial just saw him he doing has, it. He has the same haircut as Ralph Wiggum. Like, <laughs> of course it's him. Ralph Wiggum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she picks, guess who? The tall one, everybody. She picks the tall one. Everybody's super excited because guess who they all voted for? The fucking tall one. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so then, um, let's see. We go back to Gems and Alice's house under the plane. Whoosh! So uh, James is playing like football with Hippie and he's like, you didn't touch me. You didn't touch me, you stupid dog, you stupid untouching dog. And then they go inside and Mr. Banks is just there licking his paw like, I'm just in a house of morons. What am I doing here? He's got a point, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so Ali's like, I went to a sperm party and there were no birth charts, but I need to see birth charts because they were like, we can't disclose the location of birth. And I was like, but that's very important because all I care about is let me see your GPA in high school and your son's sign. It's like, but you're with James. How was James's GPA in high school? I don't think it was great. 
was gonna, I was just gonna go out on a limb and guess <laughs> that it wasn't great. <laughs> um, he, I think the, the his letter grades were Y O U S T U P I D F U C K I N G F A T W H O R E. Your GPA was you stupid fucking whore. Fat. Don't forget the fat part, Ali. <laughs> so Ali is like, by the way, I don't know if I want to have babies because I'm like not ready. It's like, seems like it'd be fun, but like, I don't know. It's boring. I don't want to do it. I'm just going to sit from this enormous Yeti cup that's the size of a player piano. <laughs> and he just starts crying immediately. And she's like, yeah, I don't know. Because I literally never felt to have babies, you know? And all my friends, they're like, they're called to. It's like, they want it, but I don't. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but yeah, like they dream about it. I don't dream about it. I don't like have Ali, a Pinterest board about it. Ali, oh, but these are the things that I want, and these are the things that I've worked my whole life for. I mean, sort of work, but in quotation marks, I guess you'd say. About? What, how have you worked your whole wife, your whole life for a wife and child? What are you even saying right Where now? Where did that come from? You don't even have a job. I'm, it's like, I mean, I see. <laughs> yep, I see, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a DJ who sits on toilet paper and plays from the balcony of a little bar <laughs> listen I see that picture with you and I see kids with you and it scares me when you see I'm not ready and it's like well, we've been together for a year and a half and like it's weird like I don't want to do what I do and recare and be with someone for five years come to find out it was all bullshit and I never met never met anything anywhere <laughs> yeah um this is the part that I realized that Allie is kind of my hero because she just stares <laughs> at him while he's like sobbing and going on. She's like, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's her reaction. She's like, uh-huh. She does not. She's like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, but everything I've gone through, it's leading me up to, I just want you. It's breaking my fucking heart. She's like, yeah. Yeah. I know kids are rewarding, but was what was rewarding for me was finding a way to make this Yeti cup fit in the dishwasher. It's so big. You really can't take these anywhere, unlike children. You know what I'm called to do? Carry a Yeti cup everywhere I go. <laughs> this, the love chapter for me has never been what I thought it was going to be when I was younger, you know? You think you're just going to meet that person like Chris and Doty and fall in love and spit on their door? But it didn't work out that way, you did it? You think you could just, like, fuck your friend? You, you think you can just fuck your mate's girlfriend to get on a TV show and it's just going to all work out to be a love story but it doesn't quite do it does it it's like I spit on that door for nothing <laughs> one moment you're giving her sending her flowers the next moment you're watching her spit trickle down the doorway from from the people down to the little crack at the bottom <laughs> So, um, Allie's like, well, I mean, I do see a future with you. Well, hold on, let me close my eyes so I can see it clearly. I see myself being like, bye, and then putting my Yeti into a suitcase, <laughs> carrying it downstairs. I'm a real girl's girl. I'm from a small town. Allie, bye. Sorry. <laughs> I saw my music video. For a minute, I uh, saw myself getting on a plane, but that vision's gone. <laughs> Oh, it's back. It's back. <laughs> James, stop trying to spit on the plane. It's not a door. You stupid fat slut. <laughs> oh, just you put it in my, my eye, children. didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now we go over to Tom Tom for the first pump brunch featured at Tom Tom. And Lisa walks in and sees her former pump waiter. She's like, oh, my pump boys. The pink pump is turned Tom Teal. <laughs> trademark that someone i want to put on a t-shirt <laughs> so guys it's brunch for the first time ever so uh sandoval comes his sunglasses he's like yeah i mean tom sandoval autographs autograph. hold on <laughs> fog machine <laughs> thanks craig thanks craig all right everybody it's me tom sandoval and so james is like i'm sorry i'm sorry for you being such a loser and me calling you out on it let's be friends bro <laughs> and he's like yeah that's that's cool man i don't want to ruin this moment i i picked out this this look from Liz Claiborne. So let's just have a good day. So James is like, you know, after talking to Ali, I have to remember to be the bigger person in these conversations. You know, the more important things in life that going on in my life than fighting and argue with Tom Sandoval. Yeah. And so then um, Lala is telling Schwartz, you look like Kenth, like that bad Kenth. Oh, no, I don't. I don't look like Ken. The optics of that are terrible. Uh. 
So then Ali Bali is complimenting Sheena's outfit. She's like, thank you. Summer trusts me today. <laughs> and then this enormous slab of steak arrives at the table for brunch. <laughs> like, what? So then This is Lala's- the biggest brunch food I've ever seen. And the whole thing about Tom Tom is it's healthy. It's not junk food. It's like really, I mean, I'm not saying this is junk, but wasn't it fries and shit? I don't think this is on brand. <laughs> um, here's something we forgot to bring it up like a earlier, good steak, though. which was the music video. And I'm sorry, I won't, I won't take us back there for too long, but at this you music video they did, does Sheena even sing that song? Because it's sung by a guy that they even show in the music video singing the song, she, but Sheena's she not singing verse. it. She has a guest verse. Don't you remember when she was in the recording booth where she's like, oh, my God, that's funny. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Oh, Apple, Apple, Let's Apple. Have a good time. <laughs> oh. So um, Lala's like, by the way, Allie and Katie, like, what were you guys talking to, talking about at the donors parties? And Katie's like, well, she said a paintball that seems like I'm miserable and getting angry at everything. So I'm going to pretend to laugh because I'm like not miserable. And look, I'm not wearing black because I'm not like angry. See, it's like ridiculous that you'd even say that. Ha ha ha. Change your mind. Ha ha And uh, she's like, um, I didn't say that word, Alice. Did I say that word miserable? And she's like, uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of the word, but all I could think of is how I don't want babies with James. She's like, that's hilarious. Did you tell him? I'll Did accept that. I'll accept that. Did you that's. laugh while he cried? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did Mr. Banks point his paw at him and laugh too? Because that would have been great. <laughs> Was it a cryobanks? I really want to send my tears somewhere. <laughs> Mr. Cryobanks. <laughs> <laughs> he runs the banks, right? So Lala's like, uh, she's like, okay, well, I was going to have a conversation with you, Katie, because I feel like maybe you're not in a happy space, even though you're trying to look happy right now. And Katie's like, you're wrong. I'm, I'm like, really, I'm really happy. Really happy. Really. really yeah. Happy. I'm super, super happy. She says, well, I just want to know that I don't trigger you because when you said it, girl, tonight that you don't feel like I'm loyal or consistent, Katie's like, well, I feel like your softness is going to people that are like, not the most deserving people. And I feel like you're more like defensive with me lately. Yeah, but you know what? I think because like you and I were like inseparable last year's and like friends go through things, they go through life changes and like you and Ariana like very close now and like I don't know where my place is with you because I've gone through things. This is so, so la la. To be poking at someone and villainizing them the entire season and purposely going to lunch with these men and stuff who fucked them over and being like, they deserve another chance. Where's my, where was this respect when I got dumped from me? So like, you're going out of your way to fuck with these people. And then you're like, you've been me- mistreating me this whole <laughs> you've, I know. You've been mistreating me this whole year and putting them on the defensive. It's very classic, la la. And Ariana grabs Lala's hand, which is like, it presents like, oh, you, you, you know, we're here for you. But it's really saying like, go fuck yourself. Yeah. So Lala's like, you know, and I get it. I have a kid. And Ariana's like, well, can we just like all have like a night where we just like lay in bed and do nothing? Kitty's like, um, no, we're not on Summer House. I don't have a person or a boyfriend or a kid. I really don't even have a plant at this point. I have all the time in the world. Like I literally have nothing to do. So I don't, so don't feel like I don't have time for you because like that makes me feel sad. I just sit in my apartment with two easels up and hope someone comes by and wants to paint with me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So Sheena's like, well, maybe it's just one of the things that I've learned getting closer with Lala. Is it like she needs people to check on her a little more? Like she needs to hear like, ding, what are you doing? And like, ding, what are you doing? And then we find out that Lala's even more full of bullshit because Lala's like, oh yeah, okay. So I I do have a kid and I haven't spent any time with you or made any effort towards you. So that's true, but we need to show up for each other. No. (laughs) <laughs> you, you're like, I have a baby, so I'm going to ignore all of my friends, which is valid. You know, I have friends with babies, and I get it. Yeah, but babies. you're ignoring all your friends, and then you're trying to guilt trip her because she's calling you out for talking shit about her. Us. And and now you're about to have another baby, so you'll also, you'll be even more MIA. And then you'll be, and then she's going to pull the card of like, I'm going through a Lutz right now. I had like a baby, and I've like a toddlers, and there's like so much, and I need people to check in zombies. Oh, jeez. So, uh, meanwhile, I just know Schwartz how is right just, you are. I'm like, God damn it. I know. I know. 
Uh, now Schwartz is like cheering with, he's like cheersing with randoms and everything. And James is DJing. And so they start to play uh, Apples. Did you notice Shuna. this one Shuna. girl who is like getting down and dirty dancing in the front? And her friend was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop at this. <laughs> we are on <laughs> television. On you look crazy. <laughs> Please stop it. So Apples is like, how you like them apples? How you like them apples? Apples, 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 apples. And and then um, Sandoval is like, by the way, Schwartz, um, I got something from Doug. He has another property we can move into, but like, I'll give you some time to think about it. Because like, after living with Ariana, who's like pretty much an enemy, and like being able to coexist in that house, I've realized. Oh wait, what I've realized, you'll never get to know. Because here comes Sheena. Oh. <laughs> Hi, um, how's everything going? Because I know there's been a podcast that's been talking about you, and that must really, really hurt you. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been so hard. And she's like, yeah, well, I feel betrayed and hurt, and so, like, I'm not going to get any closure either. So, okay, anyway, I'm not going to get an email. Okay, like, I just want to talk about something. Okay, so I came out with a song. Congratulations to me. Thank you. Where's my Grammy? Thank you. You based brunch on me? That's amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so there's a couple of lines in it, and I just wanted to say they're open to interpretation. Interpretation. But there is one line where it says, from a Ferrari to a Jetta, like, thought you knew better. Like, because, you know, like, you went from something gold to, like, something that's, like, not. And, like, you can do better. And he's like, oh, man. And Schwartz is like, that could be anybody. And he says, you know, the song is open interpretation, except for the fact that Rachel used to literally drive a Jetta. Oh, God, the optics of this song are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think that on the flip side, it implies that at one point in Tom Sandoval's life, he had access to a Ferrari. So there. Yeah. It's that's a very true. complimentary song. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, also, it's really dissing Tom. I mean, it's dissing Tom, but it's mostly dissing Raquel, right? I mean, she's calling Raquel a Jetta. So um, yeah, I she feel was like, like <laughs> you're not going to be able to hate it. He goes, you know what? You'd feel differently if you went through what I went through and I was writing a song about you, but that's okay. It's fine. Just capitalize off my pain. Now, excuse me. I'm going to storm out of here and put on my dipped out t-shirt. Excuse me. I've got to put on a lightning bolt and, uh, you know, do a set about Schwartz's mom in a fog machine. <laughs> As people scream, stand up, bitch. I feel like Sheena and I had come like a long way and we we're really starting to become friends again. And then it's like, oh, go profit off my pain. I'm like, again, uh, do we want to go look at the t-shirt that says dipped out right now? Yeah, the shirt that off, is about bro. you cheating. Loser. Just please, you know what? I think it would be so much easier to forgive Sandoval if he would just stop singing. But I feel like the fact that he shows up late everywhere and the fact that he keeps assaulting people's ears with no regards. I mean, surely he knows he can't sing. No one is that crazy. Like, even if you're surrounded by yes men, you've heard people online being like, please stop. Like, yeah. don't you get noise complaints? Like, how are I you know. getting away with this? I mean, I think that that is just proof of how little respect he has for human beings in general. And then he goes... I mean, it's just like, oh, okay, you're going to make a song. It's just going to be like, oh, Tom's going to be collateral damage in this. I don't give a shit. I got to put my track out. Sir, you cheated on your girlfriend of 10 years and had basically very, like, very faux uh, remorse about it. I'm so He's going to be the one to talk about collateral collateral damage. I'm so bored but he was <laughs> He's just like, he's never going to learn. He's just going to be that sad, douchey guy. He's aged 10 years and two. And he's just, we're just going to, now we're just going to watch him slowly decline and say the same things over. I think James was right. He's like, he's going to be that washed up guy in a karaoke club, pulling his dick penis out of the, out of his jacket, playing, being like, I played this on TV one time, you know, with the cracks that he had to have glued together from Anne. And, oh, it's just... Yeah, and he goes, He goes. if Sheena was really caring about mending things, she wouldn't have done this. Sheena does not care about mending things. She cares about staying on the TV show and shooting with whoever the producers want her to shoot with. That's all she wants. And if you knew Sheena at all, you knew the very first thing she was going to do was try to capitalize off of this, which shows that you don't know Sheena at all. Well, you know who I've else is annoyed Sheena that they're trying to capitalize? Both sides now. What? I'm sorry, what'd you say? What were you singing? I was just singing a little song about Sheena. Uh, That's all. Go on. You know who else is very hurt by Sheena's song? Um, 
Beethoven. trying to think of his name. Um, I was going to say <laughs> Robin Williams, but he's R.I.P. Casey, Sorry. Casey Kasem. Um, no, also the guys from Good Will Hunting. Because that's Good Will Hunting. Ben, you can't just be like, what yeah. are you referencing Good Will Hunting Matt like Damon. 30 years later? It's like, guess what, guys? How about them apples? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I blew that one. What a day. What a day. <laughs> what a day. I, this has been a lunatic, lunatical podcast. Much, I have no idea what we've so even talked about. It was so fun. This was a day, this was a Vanderpump orgy. I mean, it was, like, we talked about five episodes of Vanderpump Villa today. And tomorrow we, we talk were, about the Valley. And tomorrow we talk about Jax. <laughs> we're leaving this recap to go take notes on the Valley. <laughs> Jay actually knocked over the cake at Cruz's birthday. Hey, 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 hey. So if you want to roll in the Vanderpump mud with us, go to Patreon. We've got our first five episode catch up deal, our first four episode four catch episode. up. And then we have a recap coming out uh, later this week for that. So go join Patreon. And thank you for everybody being here and on video and on Patreon, everything else. And go get your tickets for our European trip. You guys. It's going to be a bad thing. Yeah, see everyone on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Erin McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurtz. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. We forever love Ava. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. We got our wish. It's Jen Plish. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo. Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a can. And Anthony, let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today, or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com/survey. Fifty high school senior girls descend on Mobile, Alabama every summer to compete for a massive cash prize. It isn't Survivor. It's one of America's most lucrative scholarship competitions for teen girls. It's been around for seven decades. Now you'll hear what took place behind the scenes. From Pineapple Street Studios and Wondery, this is The Competition. I'm your host, Shimoliai, and I was Nevada's contestant 20 years ago. Now I'm returning as a judge to find out what two weeks with 50 of the country's most ambitious teens can tell us about girlhood in America. What happens when the competitors are thrown into the deep end with the best and brightest? And how does surviving the competition prepare them for everything that comes after? Follow the competition on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of the competition early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery+. Plus. I love a good parasocial relationship with a celebrity who will probably never know my name. I mean, honestly, who knows? Don't count yourself out. <laughs> but my favorite part about these feuds is how they're ignited by the tiniest things. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. I accidentally laminated my brows too much. It starts small and then it gets so big. Be honest, Naomi, I'm fearful of you to this day. I don't know her. We all just have to admit, we're addicted. Everybody has opinions. Everyone picks sides. Leave Britney Spears alone right now. 
from Wondery. I'm Sydney Battle. And I'm Matt Bellisai. And this is Dis and Tell, la, la, la. where we unpack why we get so invested in these feuds and whether or not our attention only makes the whole thing worse. Follow Dis and Tell wherever you get your podcasts.